He's been listening in on that conversation. <laughs> um, I know that... Uh, good morning to you, John. Thanks so much for your time on Fox League Live. I know that everybody's sort of looking into the foreseeable future. It seems like we're going to have time on our hands, but given all of the issues that have been tossed up in the game, um, there's going to be a lot of planning and plotting to do, isn't there? Yeah, uh, good morning, Jess. Ray for Mickey. Um, Bomb. <laughs> thanks for having us uh, on your show, guys. But... Um, yeah, there is. Look, I think there's just so much unknown at the moment and, and that's the hardest thing, you know, for me as head coach. Obviously, our health and our safety in this environment is absolutely paramount. So, you know, everything comes, you know, a distant second, you know, to looking after ourselves and each other. Um, but there just is so, un, so much unknown, you know, as just that they're going through the, the finances now and the forecasting. And, you know, I guess they need to come up with a model that, that is worst case scenario. And, 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 and let's be honest, that looks pretty ordinary for you know, the players, but I think they all understand, you know, their part in the game that yeah. they are going to have to take a hit, you know, like everyone else has, not only in rugby league, but, you know, globally um, in this environment. And I think, um, yeah, like you guys alluded to before, I don't think, you know, it's going to be a long time until our game looks the same as far as the finances are concerned. But, you know, let's hope that we can come up with a model that, you know, is sustainable for all and, um, and we can get back to the game that we love. We're just talking about if the salary cap does. I know there's a lot of unknowns. I'm not sure if you know this, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. If the salary cap does uh, get reduced by a significant amount, where do the players stand with their contracts? I mean, we, I've got an idea, but I'm not 100% certain. Do you know? Yeah, Brath, I don't actually know, man. I was talking to Wade Graham about this um, just the other day. You know, I, I'd like to think that, you know, as a player who signed those contracts, I... I guess they, you know, they're going to try and hang on to every dollar that they've signed up for. You know, we've got some players at our club that are signed to 2023. Um, you know, that we've built you know, our future around. So um, I don't know, mate. I really don't know. I don't. I don't know where we're at as far as you know, recruiting and contracting through this period. Uh, you know, I don't know what we can offer guys uh, to re-sign. Uh, I certainly can't answer you uh, as far as you know those guys that have signed those deals and and if they're expected to get you know every dollar they've signed up for. So. Yeah, it's just a bit of unknown at the moment, mate. Johnny, mate, it's such a unique roll, roller coaster you've been on. Let, let, talk to us about the opening 18 months of, of being a, an NRL head coach. I mean, you're assistant coach there at Cronulla. You spent the, the pre-season there with the unknown of whether yourself or Jim Dimmick were really going to get the reins as, as the head coach. Um, then you go and get the head head coaching job you get enormous injury toll to all, pretty much all of your senior players last year but still find a way to uh, make the finals then, then you've had issues around Josh Dugan over the summer and his future in the game then you've had Josh Morris one of your you know your most consistent <laughs> and senior players have to leave and go to the Roosters because of salary cap drama the list goes on mate just, <laughs> mate, just a welfare check my friend how are you buddy <laughs> he for a long ago I think I'll still like, on a Sunday morning yeah. trouble, yeah. oh, I'm sweating. still got your mate, shoelaces I'm, uh, in I'm, yeah. I'm good I'm all good mate I, I you know I wouldn't sign up for this position if I if I didn't think it was uh, you know going to be awesome it was going to be all smooth sailing um I think you may have forgot the uh, the salary cap fine that was leveled at leveled at us as well, <laughs> which is probably which is probably to be fair that's probably been my greatest uh, concern to manage. I mean, you know, yeah. just after I started, um, you know, we lost our CEO in Barry Russell, and we had a bit of change there, and I only took over a couple of weeks before the season commenced in '19, so that was a big enough um, distraction as it was. But you know, no rookie coach who starts is going to come into a perfect setup, and you know, everything in place from they've got to work hard to get it back on track, and that's what I've been trying to do. There's been adversity uh, around me, no doubt, from day one. And, um, you know, we, we navigated through that as best I, as I thought we could have done last year. We, you know, we had a horrific, horrific injury toll, um, a huge salary cap fine. We had players had to move on. Um, but but out of all that adversity, Mickey, we, we found some real strength and resilience that, you know, you know that, you play at this club, mate, and it's kind of been built on those sorts of times. And, I've, and as a player myself, I kind of reflected back on those times we went through. And one thing we do well at the Sharks is really bunker down and stick tight. And we've been able to get through, you know, those hard times. And, you know, I was really proud last year to, to play finals footy, given we had, you know, some stages we had over a thousand games injury watching on from the sideline. And we de debuted, you know, six uh, rookies who, who are really going to be the, the future of this club, you know, moving forward. So there's a lot of positives to take out of last year. And I felt that we had a really good pre-season this year and stripped it right back and set some new standards and held each other accountable and you know all our big guns were looking really good as far as uh had good pre-seasons and um you know and now of course this hits but you know i suppose this one you know i'm not alone in this case there's 16 other head coaches going through it and um yeah this one's a little bit different to what we've been through in the past but 
Uh, you know, hopefully all the adversity has is, is made me a better coach and uh, a stronger coach for it. And, and, and hopefully one day I'll get to coach without these challenges around me. I'm sure you will, Johnny. The start of the year, like, it's been a tough... I think not much expectation put on you guys as a club. I think, you know, there's been a lot of experts critical of, of the... Not critical, but not expecting too much out of the Sharks this year. But, I mean, the start you had against South and Melbourne, I thought you were fantastic. Could have won both games. You must have been proud of the, those two performances. Yeah, you know, it was good. I suppose it was yeah, hard to not listen to the media, you know, at the start of the year. I mean, uh, the Sharks over the last few years have been a, definitely a top four team. But, um, you know, I was always confident that we had a, still had a really good roster and a lot of uh, what excited me is the youth that we had on our side. Like our first two games, we, I think we had seven or eight guys out there under the age of 23, you know, and that's, you know, a couple of that with experience in Wade Graham and Aaron Woods and Sean Johnson, Chatty Townsend. And, you know, it's a formidable side still. I, I was really optimistic about our chances and I, I was actually very proud of the boys and how they started i would have loved to be in here two from two but more important for me we had we had two solid performances um you know against top four teams it was, it was the even tries all only penalty goals were difference and i felt that we really showed some signs that we're going to be in for a big year so you know whilst this is an interruption you know to our season we'll um we'll wait patiently to get back into it when we're allowed to and hopefully we can pick up where we left off johnny sean johnson over the years i mean we've called these games in here at fox and we talk about him every week i mean when he's at his best, he is the best player in the world when he's at his best. But it's hard to get the best out of him consistently. That, that's been his biggest challenge over his career. What have you found coaching him? Well, what, how, how do you see it? What do you think are his triggers to get the best out of him? Can you see him performing at an optimum every week? Yeah, that, you know, Ray, that's my challenge as head coach, you know, for all my players, not just Sean, to try and get that consistency. And, and Sean, he'll tell you himself, that's... That is his biggest challenge, I think. Um, like, sure, he is so good that, um, you know, sometimes, obviously, we, we expect that every single time he takes the field. And we know that that's not possible all the time. But I think the challenge for Shawnee is that, you know, his good game and his, his, his worst game isn't too far apart. And, and we're trying to, to bridge that gap. He's got a lot of people around him in our squad who demand the ball. You know, he's got Chatty Townsend. He's got Wade Graham. He's got, you know, some, some, some speed and class out wide. They all want the ball. And I think, the environment where he's come from uh, is certainly very different. So, um, you know, getting into uh, settling to where the way we play has you know, been a challenge for him. And he was hampered last year by some injuries, hamstring, his lower back, he, and he comes with out of preseason. So, I was real proud of the preseason he had this year. He's worked real hard. He came back to training from his break a couple of weeks early from his rep break. Um, and you know, he's making showing signs. He's going to have a real good year. Didn't have a great game against the Storm. Uh, had an interrupted, interrupted week in his prep leading into it, but. Um, you know, it's, it's no, no doubt a challenge for mine and, and Sean is to, to get that level of consistency um, his time here at Canola. Bomber, in, in this tough time, you know, that we're all going through, um, the whole world's going through, if there was two occupations that you'd love to be married to, I, I think one would be a doctor or a nurse and the other, for us parents, would be a school teacher. <laughs> now, now, talk to us how lucky you are to have your wife, Michelle, at home <laughs> looking after the homeschooling. Is she a teacher? <laughs> yeah, so I've, uh, yeah, she's actually <laughs> – but I'm very lucky. So she's just um, she's just acquired another student this week. Yeah, uh, in, in, that was the next show, question. So. With 10 allowed in a room at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're uh, all ready for our nap plan books that she's all prepared. She's got the yeah. sessions ready to go. Um, but no, she's um, very confident in that area, mate. She's doing a fantastic job, um, as all our p parents are. I saw Simone's yeah. got her work cut out for her too, mate, uh, with your wild bunch. But, um, you know, we're getting getting through it. Uh, the boys are uh, driving her insane. But yeah. um, I'll try and get them outside when I can uh, and, and time over. Hey, mate, uh, obviously everyone taking pay cuts in their – mate, uh, surely the Sharks haven't stripped you down to that house below. That, that's not that's not their house. We, we've seen Hindmarsh's house. We've seen Parker's house. Mate, they haven't thrown you in a cubby house, have they, the Sharks? Mate, that is the, that is the dog house of the Morris the family. House. I can tell you, I can fit in that's it. That's where you fit on a Saturday night, is it? That's where we all end up. <laughs> that's it, mate. It's straight, straight out the side window. No one even knows you're gone. <laughs> Hey, hey, Mickey, I've got, I got, got a few boys here. You want to say good day to you? Oh, yeah, throw them on. Where's Cruzy? Yeah. Here he is. Hey, hey boys, hey. Uh, there you go. Boys. Oh, they're good boys. Lads, have a look at them. Sharks, ball boys. Yeah. yeah, mate. 
They've been, they've been working hard on their skills, mate, while the footy trains have been cancelled, waiting to get back into their D last. Yeah, yeah actually, D last are on Carl Kang Bar, mate, so they're, they're rival junior league clubs. Oh, they're good boys. Yeah. How have you been looking after your rig, mate? You've got the best rig in the, as a coach, <laughs> best looking coach in the competition. Surely you've got. You got the quads out, Bomber, on a Sunday mate, morning. Come here, look at your quads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just look at your quads. Stand up. Nah, look. Stop. I've got a garage full. Uh, uh, brace with a you know, bit of a jailhouse workout gets it gets a run, but um, yeah, try and get in early most mornings before the boys and and stay a bit active and try and you know set the bar high. But yeah, it certainly gets harder, harder to get older for sure. Beautiful. Now, Bummer, I know that you've challenged all the players at your club to learn something new during this time of isolation. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, good question. Well. I do have a guitar sewed away under the bed, so I might I might pull that out again and try and pick up where I was about ten years ago. But um, yeah, I don't know. Send Warren Smith around. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Bob the run for his money. Maybe the next cross we do, I'll have a song for you. Who knows? We will keep you to that. Um, thanks so much for your time this morning.